Hi followers welcome to Wings of Faro Today in this video we can see flight mechanics solution which has been asked in the gate aerospace exam 2019 First question the power of glide range of an airplane with a maximum lift drag ratio of 18 when the glide starts at an altitude of 4 km ease of round off to the nearest integers in terms of kilometer let's see the solution here you can see the given figure so here in this given question they have given the maximum l by d ratio which is 18 and the height and an altitude they have given as 4 km and from this we have to find what is the range in terms of kilometer now find the value of r by substituting the given values and we get the range is 72 km which is within the advisable zone next question for an airplane flying in a vertical plane the angle of attack is 3 degree the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity in wind axis are 300 km per hour and 115.72 km per hour respectively the pitch altitude attitude of the airplane is or in terms of degree round off to two decimal places so from this we can understand from this figure this is an aircraft which is having an angle of attack that is alpha and uh, from here they have given this hor horizontal component as well as vertical component as shown in figure and that is horizontal component is given as at xw 3000 km per hour and the vertical component is zw that is wind axis 15.72 km per hour and here from here we need to find out the pitch attitude so let's see the solutions these are the values when we resolve the equation then let's we need to find what is the climb angle that is gamma so we can write v sin gamma by v cos gamma equals to zw by xw substituting the values and we get tan gamma equals to 15.72 by 300 now let's equate and substitute the values we get climb angle equals to tan inverse of 15.72 by 300 we get the tan that is uh, climb angle as 2.99 degree now here the question is that we need to find the pitch angle which means which is a combination of the climb angle as well as the angle of attack so we can just add up the angle of attack with the climb angle to get the pitch altitude so we get as 5.99 and which is within the reason consider an airplane with an weight of 8000 newton wing area of 16 meter square wing zero lift drag coefficient of 0.02 oswald efficiency factor of 0.8 and the wing aspect ratio of 6 in a steady level flight with an wing lift coefficient of 0.375 considering the same flight speed and the ambient density the ratio of the induced drag coefficient during the steady level flight to that during the three, three, uh, 30 degree climb is on round off to two decimal places so let's see the solution here are the given data that is they have given the total weight of an aircraft that is 8000 newton that is wing area 16 meter square cd not 0.02 e 0.8 ar aspect ratio 6 cl 0.375 and rho 1.225 kg per meter cube and velocity is also same what we have to find is we need to find the ratio between the cdi that is a induced drag coefficient at steady and also at the climb angle of 30 degree so let's see the solution recalling the cdi that is a induced drag coefficient which is equivalent to the kcl square k is a induced drag factor which can also write as the pi ear so at steady level conditions we can substitute the given formula cl is given in the given data 
that is 0.375 square of that we get as 0.141 and by substituting the value of e a r in into pi we get as 15.07 and where we get that induced drag at steady level flight is of about 0 0.00935 now from here we can also find the velocity at during steady level flight that is half rho v square scl equals to weight so we know all the values except the velocity so from here by substituting the values we can find the value of velocity that is 46.66 meter per second now next comes during climbing flight at the angle of 30 degree so during climbing flight we know that lift is equals to the w cos 30 now using the same formula we can find we already found the velocity that is 46.66 meter per second and from here we just substitute need to substitute all the values given values and from here we can find the value of cl that is 0.325 and simply we need to find in the induced rack formula that is cdi equals to cl square by pi e a r and we get during the 30 degree climbing angle the cdi is 0 0.007 now as per the given question we need to find that cdi at steady as well as cdi at climbing at 30 degree so now we just need to divide the two terms and we get that value of about 1.335 which is uh, approximately or round off we can say as 1.34 and which is within the advisable zone of this answer. A propeller driven aircraft airplane has a gross weight of 4905 Newton with a wing area of 6.84 meter square. Assuming that the wings are operating at a maximum CL3 by 2 by CD of 13 and propeller efficiency is 0.9 and the specific fuel consumption of the engine is 0 0.76 kg per kilowatt hour given that the density of the sea uh, of the air at the sea level is 1.225 kg per meter cube and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square the weight of the fuel required for the endurance of the 18 hours at sea level is round off to the nearest integers in terms of newton so here we need to find the weight of the fuel required in this during this 18 hours of endurance it's a very simple question they have given data that is total weight is given that is 4905 newton s is given 6.84 meter square cl3 by 2 by cd has been given that is 30 uh, this efficiency has been given 0.9 endurance is 18 hours sfc is 0.76 kg per kilowatt hour and density is 1.225 kg per meter cube now let's recall the endurance formula for a propeller driven aircraft this is the formula you have to memorize this formula and just you need to substitute the given data and given values which has been given in this question and we get that the weight of the fuel approximately of 1458 newton and which is within the advisable zone next question the design of an airplane is modified to increase the vertical tail area by 20 percent and decrease the moment arm from the aerodynamic center of the vertical tail to the airplane center of gravity by 20 percent Assuming all other factors remain unchanged, the ratio of the modified to the original directional statical stability that is CNB due to tail fin is round off to two decimal places. Now these are the given data that is when it is modified of a moment arm if suppose the the original moment uh, lever arm is L then modified lever arm will be considered as a 0.8 of L and if the vertical tail area original vertical tail area is SV and the modified when it is getting modified with the tw increasing 20 percentage we can write that vertical tail area S equals to 1.2 of SV 
Now let's recall this formula of the yaw moment coefficient with respect to that uh, angle of slip. So we just get to know this that all other factors remain same only these two factors will be varying. So let's equate let's equate this value on this above formula with the modified direction stability to the original stability that is modifying is that 0.8 of the original one with the point two of the one point two of the original one with respect to the with respect to the original direction stability then just simply substitute it and we get the modified direction stability to the original direction stability is of zero point nine six which is the advisable range. Last question, which of the following graph represents the response of the dynamically unstable airplane? So we know the dynamically unstable which will be getting undamped at the end of the scenario. So from here we can understand the right answer is answer A.